Hey guys, in this video I'm going to share some of the most mind-blowing things I learned from the book Mind to Matter by Dawson Church. Now if you don't know Dawson Church, he's one of the research scientists who works with Joe Dispenza doing all those crazy brain scan experiments, and man, he has a lot of interesting stuff to say. So hold on to your chairs, this video is going to be a wild ride. Okay, now I cannot remember for the life of me why I bought this book. I mean, I buy a lot of books. I buy more books than I read because I heard a piece of advice, I think it was from Ramit Sethi a while ago. He says, if you see a book that interests you, just buy it. Like, don't bother with this whole thought process of whether or not that's exactly the book that you want to read because if you ignore it, if you never read it, then you've only lost $10. Whereas if you spend an hour researching it, right? Assuming that you value your time at more than $10 an hour, well, you've just wasted a whole hour of time to, to save $10. So I've made that my policy now. If a book interests me, I buy it. And sometimes I don't remember why I bought it, but I'm glad that I bought this one. The point of the book is what the name implies, that your mind creates matter, that your mind determines the environment that's around you, which is interesting because my last video I did was all about how you should stop letting yourself be a victim. You should stop letting your failure or success in life, your destiny in life, be determined by the circumstances around you. And the point of this book is to go even further to say that it is your mind that creates the circumstances around you. Your mind literally creates matter. It means this in a very literal manner. Most people recognize that a thought can become an action, and an action can build something, right? So, so you can think of building a tree house, and then actually build a tree house, and, and in so doing, the, your thought becomes a reality. Your thought becomes matter. But actually, it's a lot more literal, a lot more fundamental than that. And I'm going to get into that a little bit in this video. Okay, now mind-blowing fact number one is that your mind literally creates your brain. Most of us believe that this happens the other way around. We believe that the mind is what the brain does, that the brain thinks, the brain creates self-consciousness, and that thinking and self-consciousness is what we call the mind. It's just an epiphenomenon of the brain. But the truth is, and we're finding in more and more scientific studies that actually the opposite is true, that the mind creates the brain. The truth is that the brain is being recreated constantly and quickly. A neuron, a brain cell, typically only lasts about 10 minutes. That's the entire life of a brain cell, and then it has to be replaced. So the substance of the brain is constantly replacing itself, and it's constantly updating itself. And studies have shown that certain mind practices, such as meditation, can have enormous effects on how the brain recreates itself. So by choosing to use your mind in a certain way, by choosing to focus on a certain thing instead of another thing, by choosing to meditate instead of letting your mind race, by making all these choices about where your mind goes, you are literally recreating your brain to support the mission of your mind. Your mind is the conductor and the brain is the vehicle. Most of us think that our brain is what does the thinking, but it's wrong. We started thinking before our brain existed, and we will continue to think long after our brain is gone. The brain is really just an interface between our true mind and our physical body. Mind-blowing fact number two. Your brain is both a transmitter and a receiver of electromagnetic fields. Did you know that I could put a machine this far away from my head, and it could read waves that are coming from my brain? That's how an EEG machine works. They don't drill into your brain in order to take your brainwave readings. They can read them from outside of your head because the waves are projecting outside of your physical body. You are literally, your thoughts are affecting the, the space around you. That's what a wave is. A wave is something that puts energy into the space around you. So your brain, like other parts of your body for that matter, is actually a transmitter of electromagnetic signals and to make it even more interesting, the brain is also a receiver of electromagnetic signals. The brain cells are full of these tiny little microtubules that structure the cell and are also hollow cylinders, like a TV antenna. And it is entirely possible because we can demonstrate, like I'll tell you about later in this video, that our brains transmit information to each other without us saying anything. It is entirely possible that these microtubules are acting as an antenna to pick up 
energy signals from the world around us. So our brains are constantly, at every moment, are affecting and being affected by the energy fields that are around us. Okay, mind-blowing fact number three. Energy healing works and is empirically validated. Okay, now this sounds weird and woo-woo, and I was very skeptical of this, but the book makes a pretty compelling case for this and links to a list of 1,000 scientific studies that validate this. 1,000. Now, those of you who are skeptical, just like me, let me go into a little more detail. Now, you probably have heard of the placebo effect, right? The placebo effect is something that scientists noticed that people who believe that they're, that they're being cured of a certain disease, if, they, if they're given a pill uh, and they believe that that pill will cure them, they're more likely to be cured than if they don't believe it, even if the pill is the same. And, and that works in such a way that even if the pill actually does nothing, but they believe that the pill will cure them, they sometimes get cured and they show better results than the people who know that they're receiving a pill that does nothing. Now, scientists like to just kind of shunt this aside and say, okay, we know this exists, we know that people having faith uh, is likely to heal them, and we can't really explain it, so we'll just control for it in our studies. We'll have double-blind studies so we don't have to worry about this, and then we'll just shunt it to the side and ignore it. Which seems a little silly to me, because that seems like it would be something worth studying. The fact that people having faith can heal you by itself. That seems like it'd be something that's worth looking into a little more, don't you think? So people love to trash faith healing, but they don't realize that everybody already acknowledges that faith heals. It's already established. It's, it's beyond controversy. But these studies on energy healing go far beyond the placebo effect. For example, it's been shown that energy healers can eliminate cancer in mice. I know that sounds crazy, but it's real. You can find the link to the study in the book. But anyway, this kind of gets rid of the placebo effect because there is no placebo effect for mice. They don't know what's happening. If somebody's waving their hands in front of them, they don't know that the person's trying to heal them. They're not being healed by their own faith. They're being healed by something that's outside of them. Now, another study found that this healing works whether or not the person doing the healing actually believes in it. They can believe that it's complete crap and just go through the, the steps, which is... I believe, I, know, I don't know the details, but it's something like uh, just providing the intention that there is an energy coming from them that is healing the other person. So somebody who does not even believe that this is possible, as has been demonstrated, can actually heal people in the same way. Another thing they found was that the healing works at a distance. They can have somebody in Japan directing healing intention at somebody in the United States and that person will show positive benefits. And by the way, these are not just random coincidences. These are controlled studies, right? If you don't know what a controlled study means, that means that they have a group of, one group of people uh, that's just normal, that's, that's not being acted upon, and they have another group of people that is being acted upon, and at the end of the experiment, they, they test the two groups to find the difference. And then depending on the size of the two groups, they can figure out the statistical likelihood that that could possibly happen by chance. And all of these statistical likelihoods are minuscule. Now, another thing that skeptics like to say, and I really, I should say cynics, because there are people, people who are skeptical is one thing, but people who hold on to their skepticism in the face of boatloads of evidence are something completely different. But anyway, what these people like to say is that, oh, this only works on aches and pains. Like if you can make somebody who has back pain believe that they don't have back pain, then the, the mind can just shut out the back pain and make them think that they don't have back pain anymore, which is a fair point. But, but then they go on to say that these energy healing things only work for things that are basically aches and pains. But the data shows that in addition to the aches and pains type stuff, energy healing has an effect on AIDS, on burns, on cancer, on heart disease, on diabetes, on obesity, all things that can be measured and tested. These are not just aches and pains. It reminds me of an interview I watched with Darren Brown, who is a magician and an adamant atheist, and he does these kind of like experiments that, to kind of mess with the human mind and see what the human mind is capable of. It's really interesting stuff. I'm a big fan of Darren Brown, actually. But he did one where he wanted to see if he could become a faith healer. Despite not believing himself, he wanted to basically trick everybody to believe that they were being healed 
in order to expose that people who say they're faith healers are charlatans. So he did this act where he pretended to be a faith healer and he said he got thousands of letters from people saying that he had healed their problems. And some of them were just aches and pains and that kind of thing, but he said that one of the letters he got was somebody saying that he was paralyzed from the waist down and he was healed because of Darren Brown's faith healing. And Darren had no idea what to make of this, right? His whole point in creating this experiment was to prove that faith healers are frauds. And yet, even not believing himself, he created this really dramatic healing for somebody. And even despite that, as far as I know, Darren Brown still goes around peddling this atheism, naturalism, there's nothing beyond your five senses kind of scientism mindset. It's funny how people who don't believe in religion or spirituality or anything outside of the currently understood laws of science are just as dogmatic about their unbelief as the most zealous religious people are about their beliefs. And it's funny actually because it's a really narrow view of science seeing the world this way that, oh, it's only the, the science that exists now is all there is. I mean, the science that existed a hundred years ago uh, is much less expansive than the science that exists today, yet we can't believe that there are forces in the world that are outside of the realm of science today. It's a little silly. And in fact, 150, 200 years ago, there was a concept called animal magnetism that is similar to the faith healing concept of today. And it was something that was accepted by mainstream science and it was something that was actively sought after. If you want to learn more about animal magnetism and how that works in healing, I highly recommend you check out a book called The Spirits Book by Ellen Kardec. I'll put a link in the description below. But this actually used to be mainstream science. And for some reason, despite all of the positive advancements, but despite all of the evidence, it just got kind of shunted to the side. And I don't really know why that is, but I suspect that all of the money that was funding science realized that this was a difficult thing to profit from because anybody could learn it, anybody could do it, and so that makes it pretty hard to make any money by selling it. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, you're finding it interesting, please do me a big favor, hit the thumbs up because it makes a YouTube algorithm like me better. Leave a comment, tell me what you think. And of course, if you want more like this in the future, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell icon beside the subscribe button so you'll be the first to get all my new stuff. And of course, I'll be sure to keep you updated on all the amazing things that I'm learning from the books that I'm constantly reading. Oh, and if you think that this is interesting and other people should know the things that I'm sharing here, go ahead and share this video also. Okay, now mind-blowing fact number four. Disease shows up in your energy field before it shows up in your body. Now, I told you before, that the brain has an energy field around it, that the brain produces electromagnetic waves that create a field around it. Well, it turns out that your heart also has an electromagnetic field around it. Your heart also produces signals, which are actually quite a lot stronger than your brain's signals. And every single cell of your body has its own electromagnetic field. So the sum of all these electromagnetic fields that make up your body are all interacting with each other and all creating one uh, combined field around your body. Now, studies have found that you can infer certain things about the person's health from the characteristics of the field around their body. And one study in particular found that there was a certain signature in the electromagnetic fields surrounding women who were suffering from uterine cancer. But then the more shocking part was not that the, the cancer showed up, was, had a signature in those fields, but also that, women, that there were some women who did not have uterine cancer, whose fields showed that signature for uterine cancer, would go on to develop uterine cancer in the near future. What that means is the energy of the cancer exists before the cancer itself. Make of that what you will, but I would submit to you that this is clear evidence that cancer is primarily a spiritual disease before it ever becomes a physical disease. And I think that's true with a lot of other diseases as well. Okay, mind-blowing fact number five. Our mental and emotional states affect the people around us even without contact. Now, I told you before that our brains are both transmitters and receivers of electromagnetic frequencies. Well, the same is true with our heart as well. In fact, our heart is the stronger transmitter. 
Now you've probably experienced that you can feel someone's emotional state, right? Somebody walks in the room that's really angry or really depressed and you can feel it immediately. For a long time it was believed and I believed that this was just something that was transmitted via body language or via vocal tonality, via subconscious clues. But new research has shown that it's a little more subtle than this. You're not picking up on body language or facial clues. There is actually energy being transmitted between you and the other person that is transmitting information. For example, one study showed that people who were, who were going into states of meditation at random intervals, uh, unknown to another person in the room, that there was, there was one person in the room who was the test subject and other people who were randomly going into meditative states, that the person who is the test subject, his heart-brain coherence, which is a measurement of the electromagnetic fields of the heart as compared to the brain, were going into coherence at the same times as the meditators got into their meditative states and went out of coherence at the same time as the meditators were going out of their meditative states without any indication to him when that would be. So if you want to read this book, which I highly recommend that you do because it was an absolutely fascinating book, I will put the link in the description below. I totally recommend that you read it. I recommend that you buy the book even if you can't get around to reading it now so at least you have it in your Kindle library or whatever you do so you can read it later. And in this video, I only talked about stuff in the first three chapters, right? I was gonna make a video on the whole book, but there's just so much mind-blowing stuff in here. I only did the first three chapters. So if you're interested in another video about this book, about all the other mind-blowing stuff in the later chapters, which gets even more mind-blowing for that matter, uh, leave, let me know in the comments. Let me know if you like that and I'll make that video too. And if you wanna know more, I think you'd really like this video all about how reality works on different levels. And of course, if you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and share it with some friends.